good morning students so i am by this year i will be teaching you the third paper that is solid state electronics and in solid state electronics uh, i will be beginning with the first unit of your course and the first unit is a diffusion of minority carriers in semiconductors work function in metals in semiconductor junctions between metal and semiconductor semiconductor and semiconductor pn junction depletion layer junction potential width of the depletion layer field and capacitance of depletion layer forward ac and dc resistance of the junction reverse breakdown zener and avalanche diodes tunnel diodes point contact diodes and their importance at high frequencies light emitting diode photo diodes and effect of temperature on junction diode thermistors most of the things you have studied at class 12th and the bsc part 1 level however i am going to summarize some of the things before we begin with your third year course so now just for the sake of completeness i am writing now the name of few reference books that you can follow along with the course although i will be providing you the pdf of complete uh, uh, unit 1 and then unit 2 unit 3 and unit 4 depending upon how long we continue with these online classes the first book that is very good uh, for studying integrated electronics is integrated electronics by milman and hilkias it's a very good book and you can uh, have a e copy or if you have a book you can go through it and you will enjoy basically electronics throughout your bsc third year course the other good book is by wallsted it is electronic devices and circuit theory and coming to now indian side there is a very good book by principal of electronics by bk mehta by s chand company and solid state electronics is specially written for bsc third year course by jp agrawal so you can follow either of these books basically the idea is to learn electronics in a better way so we will begin with now with the semiconductor you all know basically at the lower classes normally we are taught that all the materials can be divided into two categories one is metal or conductor and other is non conductor conductor are the materials in which the free electrons are there and because of the free electrons the conduction can take place without any problem but coming on to the other extreme in case of insulators we have the electrons there are the atoms and each and every atom consists of the electron so in case of insulators also we have electrons but they are bound electrons they are tightly bound to the nucleus so it is not possible for them to move under the action of the electric field and that means they cannot move they cannot transport so therefore they are called insulators now coming to the conductor again uh, conductors are uh, have very good electrical and thermal conductivity they follow ohms law you know the ohms law b is equal to ir is the one form b is the potential difference i is the current and r is the resistance there is another form of ohms law also that is j is equal to sigma e j is called the current density current per unit area e is the electric field and sigma is called the conductivity of the material the conductors has a positive alpha positive thermal coefficient of resistance you must have read that rt is equal to r01 plus alpha t resistance of the conductors increase with increase in temperature they follow in, in solid state physics you will study that these conductors follow a well known law that is called beedman french law the ratio of thermal conductivity to the electronic conductivity at a constant temperature is constant and it's a very important law obeyed by almost all the conductors now coming to the insulators uh, they are basically they are not the conductor of electricity but in between we have a third class of materials also that is called semiconductor there are several ways of defining the semiconductor the most important definition of semiconductor is these are the materials whose electrical conductivity lies between conductors and the insulators that means they are better conductor than insulator but they are worse conductor 
then basically the conductor and the example of silicon and silicon and germanium are basically the well known example of the semiconducting material they belong to the fourth group of the periodic table so you will remember all these things silicon and germanium and they belong to the third sorry fourth group of the periodic table then now comparing with the resistance if you increase the resistance sorry if you increase the temperature of the semiconductor its resistance decreases that means uh, unlike conductors they have a negative temperature coefficient and uh, then uh, these semiconductors can be divided into two categories one is called intrinsic semiconductor and other is called extrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductors are the one which are pure or the semiconductor in its purest form is called intrinsic semiconductor at low temperature they are insulator but as the temperature increases they becomes conductor because of a phenomena called electron hole pair generation there are several ways of understanding what is electron hole pair generation that is nothing but the breaking of covalent bonds between the silicon and silicon atom or germanium and germanium atom in the semiconducting material so uh, here in fact if you look at the figure you have a silicon first of all we try to understand why a pure silicon or pure germanium is an insulator uh, if you recall uh, the chemistry of formation of silicon crystal inside the silicon crystal we have large number of silicon atoms and each and every silicon is surrounded by four more silicon atoms thereby forming four covalent bond with the surrounding silicon and that is how a silicon or germanium complete its octet and in chemistry you must have read that once the octet is complete it, it acquires basically the structure of the inert gas in fact the electrons are it's a complete thing so because of as long as it is pure it is a insulator because because of the formation of the octet no electron is available for the movement and therefore no conduction is possible and that is why we call that intrinsic semiconductor is an insulator but if you heat it thermal agitation that means if you raise the temperature the thermal energy is of the order of kt a is the boltzmann constant and the t is the temperature in degree kelvin so kt is the order of thermal energy so if you raise the temperature of the surroundings what will happen some of the electrons of the silicon are broken you can see the figure given here some of the electrons are broken and once the electron leaves the site of the silicon atom there is a vacancy of electron left over there and we call that as vacancy as the hole hole is nothing but the electron deficiency and this deficiency behaves like a positive charge and this entire phenomena is called electron hole pair generation that means the moment you break an electron or you break a covalent bond a electron is made free so that electron will wander here and there into the semiconducting lattice leaving behind a vacancy and that vacancy will have like a positively charged particle and we call it as hole so hole are nothing but the deficiency of the electron behaving like a positive charge now why positive these things will be addressed to you in the other course on solid state physics so here you have to assume till you are taught in solid state physics why or what were the regions of taking the charge on the hole as positive now after knowing this about the intrinsic semiconductor now we move on to the extrinsic semiconductor extrinsic semiconductor are impure semiconductor doping doping is nothing but the process of adding impurities to the semiconductor is called doping doping is a very common definition that is why we call it as pure you all know that semiconductor silicon and germanium they belong to the fourth group of the periodic table if we dope it with pentavalent impurities so we are taking two types of impurities to understand its behavior that how the conduction takes place and a pure semiconductor after doping becomes a conductor by adding impurities to it so n type semiconductors are obtained by adding pentavalent impurities to it there are several examples of 
pentavalent materials like phosphorus, arsenic, and antimony. Uh, in fact, uh, here, if you look at the table here, uh, in the table, you have the ionization energy in electron volt of all these impurities for N type and P type. For P type, we make use of trivalent impurities. I will explain why trivalent in P type and pentavalent in N type. But examples of trivalent impurities are gallium, indium, boron, and aluminum. And they are called acceptor impurities. But it is very important to understand the ionization energy of all these dopants, either the donor dopant or the acceptor dopant in N type and P type semiconductor. All these values are given in electron volt. Once you see these values, you try to visualize that suppose we take a room temperature of 27 degrees centigrade. 27 degrees centigrade corresponds to 27 degree plus 273, that is 300 degree Kelvin. If you put the value of Boltzmann class tent and the temperature T, 300 degree Kelvin together and convert it into the energy in electron volt, it comes out to be 0.025 electron volt. Or we can also write it as 1 by 40 electron volt. You have to remember this number that 300 degree Kelvin corresponds to 0.025 electron volt. That means if we look at the table for germanium, the ionization energy is just half of this value, almost approximately half of this value, 0 0.012, 0 0.013, 0 0.010. So this is half of the thermal energy corresponding to 300 degree Kelvin. Therefore, if we want to achieve this thermal energy or the ionization energy in germanium, it requires a temperature of 150 degree Kelvin. In fact, you have to visualize this to understand better what role is placed by these impurities in the semiconductor to give rise to the phenomena of conduction in two different cases. So let us first come to N-type semiconductor. Silicon or germanium are basically the class fourth, spheroidic table class fourth elements. So there are four electrons in the in the outermost orbit. And I explained you earlier that these four electrons basically forms covalent bond with the four silicon atoms if it is pure. And that is how their octet is complete and no electron is left behind to for the conduction to take place. Now, when we dope it by pentavalent trivalent impurities, uh, we are doping, basically, we are giving very small amount of dopants to it. Normally, in your textbook, you will read PPM. PPM stands for parts per million. That means one PPM means we are adding one impurity to 10 to the power of six silicon or germanium atom. So you have to remember this. That is how you can visualize it. So if you look at the figure, I have replaced one silicon by one phosphorus and phosphorus is a pentavalent impurity. So there are five electrons in the outermost orbit. So four electrons of phosphorus basically do the same work as done by the silicon, but one electron is there. And if the thermal energy available in the vicinity of this phosphorus atom is of the order of ionization energy in silicon or germanium, this electron is free. So you can see now, if you take the example of silicon and you visualize this, uh, remembering KT is 0.025. So at room temperature, we can assume all the electrons are free. So depending, so this electron of phosphorus is free. So if we are doping it by, with by 100 phosphorus atoms, there are 100 electrons which are free and they will give rise to the phenomena of induction. So in case of N-type semiconductor, electrons are basically the majority carriers. But remember, I explained you the temperature effect also, that is breaking of covalent bond, that will always be there. So therefore, if some bonds are broken, that will give rise to the formation of electrons and holes. So in case of N-type semiconductor, along with the electrons, very small number of holes will also be there. And just to differentiate these two types of charge carriers, we call electrons as the majority carriers and holes as the minority carriers. Minority because they are very small in number. 
now coming to the type uh, the p type semiconductor so they are called n type semiconductor they donate one electron so that is why i have written do and capital n here capital n stands for n type and these are donor impurities once they donate one electron they becomes positively charged so they are also there along with the silicon or germanium into the material you have to remember that fact also now coming to the trivalent impurities that means doping a, a tetravalent germanium or silicon with trivalent impurities like silicon or boron if you dope it by boron or silicon or aluminium aluminium have three electrons in the outermost orbit and we know in order to form the octet it needs four electron to get it so that means there is a deficiency of one electron so now we have to uh, basically uh, find out the definition of electron affinity if you want to remove one electron from an atom the energy required is called electron ionization energy but if you want to add one electron to an atom it is called electron affinity you must have read these terms in chemistry as well so here aluminum is basically deficient if aluminum has a deficiency of one electron so what we normally think that one electron is stolen by each and every trivalent impurity so once the electron is stolen the site from where the electron is stolen is basically electron deficient so that we have like a positive charge or that we have like a hole positively charged hole so depending upon the number of trivalent impurities we have the same number of vacancies or same number of holes available into the semiconducting crystal and these holes give gives rise to the phenomena of conduction that is why we say that in case of p type semiconductor holes are the majority carriers but because of the phenomena of electron hole pair generation thermal generation in fact we have the electrons as minority carriers so in a n and p these are the notations n is electron density number of electrons per unit volume p is the number of hole hole density nd are the ionized donor atom density density means per unit volume and similarly a stands for acceptor so capital na is the notation for ionized acceptor atom density that is d minus e every donor impurity after donating one electron becomes positively charged and every acceptor impurity after accepting one electron becomes negatively charged i have talked about majority and minority carriers now with this much introduction about semiconductor that means intrinsic semiconductor n type semiconductor and p type semiconductor let us try to understand the formation of energy bands once again because based on the formation of energy bands we can also differentiate the metal insulator and semiconductor suppose we are given an isolated atom first of all germanium silicon and carbon they have four electrons in the outermost cell if you look at the figure here in fact there are three orbits there are 14 plus 14 means in the nucleus there are 14 protons coming to the first shell we call it as a o cell there are two electrons in the next shell there are eight electrons and then in the outermost orbit there are four electrons and the electronic configuration of germanium and silicon basically outermost is s to p2 but here i have written it for germanium so it's 1s2 2s2 p6 and 3s2 p2 so 3s2 p2 means two electrons are there in the s orbit and in p orbit there are there are two electrons if we talk about uh, the individual atom individual atom means isolated atom you recall the hydrogen atom theory as long as the hydrogen atom is isolated is it has basically the discrete energy levels and you know about r minus r hc upon n square the energy uh, formula so there are different energy levels corresponding to n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 here if you follow the same thing uh, suppose we are having a large number of atoms together so now when if they are brought together initially they are far apart so the distance between them is very large so we can call them as isolated atoms they correspond to the discrete energy levels but if we bring them together 
if the hydrogen type atoms are brought together then what happens is when they come together the initial quantized label will split into a band of discrete energy labels now the question is why the band of discrete energy labels takes place so there are so many reasons for this if you make use of quantum mechanics we say that it is overlapping of the wave function when they come closer to each other of electrons we can also talk in terms of electrostatic repulsion between the electrons because after all the electron cloud interaction also takes place if the atoms are brought together and the most important is pauli exclusion principle you all know about pauli exclusion principle that no two electron in an atom can have the same set of a four quantum number that means if you have one label it cannot be occupied by more than two electrons and those two electrons also one having a spin up and other having a spin down that means if we have three electrons at the same label we cannot accommodate the third electron therefore the formation of a band is the must to accommodate or electrons so if you understand this picture here you see that initially when the distance interatomic distance was very large there was only one label <coughs> then if we are bringing it together r0 here is a, the interatomic separation in equilibrium so in interatomic separation in equilibrium these bands are going to break into the into a band of energy label so as to accommodate all the electrons you have to understand basically this now if you understand this then we can understand now the formation of a band in case of n type or p type semiconductor or semiconductor in general so you can see the figure on the x axis it is again the interatomic separation between the silicon or germanium atom and on the y axis we have electron energy uh, if you recall aufbau principle of chemistry or physics also 3s label has lower energy because initially the electron goes to the 3s label and then the electron goes to basically a 3p label there is a back, there there is a vacancy of only two electrons can be there at s label but for p label there can be six electrons two in px label two in py level and two in six and two in pz level so if we are having n number of uh, atoms and we are bringing them together so in n number of atoms there will be 2n electrons at the s level we call them as 2n s state electrons 2n states are there and 2n electrons are there but if we talk about the 3p electrons there are 2n electrons but the states are 6n because for every atom there are 6 states px two states py two states and pz two states because in p states there can be two electron s to p6 and then the next electron go to the d cell you know about all these things so initially as long as the atom is isolated s orbit is full because there are two electrons one with a spin up and other with a spin down in p orbit there are two electrons so we can accommodate four more electrons but if we talk about one mole of a material, n we can call as the Avogadro number. So if you bring them together, these basically is spread into the band. And if you look at the figure, when the separation between the germanium and silicon atom is equal to the interatomic separation, that means equilibrium se separation, these bands get separated into the two parts. The upper one has four n states because we have six n states and the two n states together. So if you add them together, six n plus two n becomes four n. So there are four n states in the upper part. We call it as a conduction band, and there are no electrons. And there are four n states in the lower part. We call it as a valency band, and there are four n electrons also because at zero degree Kelvin, all the electrons occupy the lower most state so if you understand this uh, that how the formation of conduction band and the valency band takes place and these conduction and valency bands are separated by a energy gap we call it as a forbidden band or we also call it as a forbidden energy label if you look at the lower uh, figure 
we have a valency band it is completely full then we have a conduction band that is completely empty but there are states there there can be the electrons but in between the two we have a forbidden band the separation between the top of the valency band and the bottom of the conduction band corresponds to the band gap eg so this eg is the band gap so if you understand basically the formation of the conduction band and the valency band separated by a band called forbidden band this is another basically way by which we can differentiate metal insulator and semiconductor if the separation between the conduction band and the valency band is reasonable of the order of 1 electron volt we call it as semiconductor for silicon the the band gap is 1.1 electron volt and for germanium it's 0.72 electron volt so we can take basically both of them as of the order of 1 electron volt similarly if the separation between the bottom of the conduction band and the top of the valency band that is eg is of the order of 2.5 to 6, 6 electron volt or even higher for example for silicon dioxide that is a very good insulator it is the of the order of 10 electron volt then it is almost impossible for the electron to take a transition from the valency band to the conduction band and in that case we call the material as insulator now coming to the metal in case of metal the conduction band and the valency band they superimpose one over other and depending upon the type of the metal sometimes we have a monovalent metal sometimes we have a divalent metal sometimes the trivalent metal sometimes the lower band is filled sometimes it is partially filled but there is nothing like band gap and that is why the conduction is possible in case of metal conduction in case of semiconductor is possible if the electron can manage to move from valency band to the conduction band so if we talk in terms of the energy level diagram then also we can differentiate the metal insulator and semiconductor in case of metal the conduction band and the valency band superimpose one over other in case of semiconductor the separation between the conduction band and the valency band is reasonable and therefore it is possible for the electron to excite from valency band to the conduction band under normal condition but in case of insulator it is almost impossible to to allow an electron to take a transition from valency band to the conduction band and that is why the conduction is not possible in case of insulator now coming to the electron hole pair concept once again i told you earlier that electron hole pair is formed because of the breaking of bond that is true a bond is broken so electron is made free so that electron moves here and there into the lattice but the vacancy of the electron at the silicon or germanium site behaves like a hole or behaves like a positively charged particle and that is a hole in terms of the energy level diagram if we excite an electron from the valency band and we excite it to the conduction band so in conduction band we will have one electron there will be a vacancy of electron into the valency band so that corresponds to the hole so in case of energy level diagram the generation of electron hole pair corresponds to the generation of electron in the conduction band and the generation of the hole in the valency band then there is a reverse process to it also we call it as a recombination depending upon the lifetime of the electron the electron comes back to the valency band and once it comes back to the valency band the electron hole pair is lost and we call it as a recombination you will also study further that sometimes this recombination gives you the radiation sometimes it doesn't give you the radiation and that radiation is equal to the energy of the band gap and we call these radiations as radiative and non radiative radiations so this is about the g band okay so we can now differentiate this so i will stop here for today's class in case of any query or in case of any questions or doubt you can write me at rk divedi 1963 at the rate of, at the rate of gmail.com or you can write to me at my whatsapp number 9936946
6653 so please go through it very carefully so in the next lecture we will move further and talk about more details about the semiconductor